right. Hello. Hello, everybody. To an empty channel. Yes. Save for some live streams. Okay, a lot of live streams. That's true. I have to go check some of those because I'm pretty sure we did read some uh, Harry Potter and some of them. Figure uh, that out. We read uh, we read Beetle the Bard in there somewhere. So I know that's in there somewhere. Hello, Joey Hello, Rue. Joey. Hello, Maddie. Hello, Juju. Kayla, I'm sorry that you got called into work. Um, but uh, you can catch this later, I'm sure. Hello, Thank Alistair. Thank you for just popping in to say hello. Mike, hello. Susan, hello. Everyone just hopping in. Yep, everybody pop right in. So... I think we'll give everybody a few minutes to... Yeah. Give some people a few minutes to come in before we start... Anna, hello. Away. Um, so... I think, uh... So everyone knows what's going on. Let's start this with a little story. So, we originally started the channel. Hello, because, Angela, uh, Brandon, Ren, Z Beauty. Hello, everyone. Aripra, Anna. We made lemonade for this nice Ren. Hello, Henry, Ella. Hi, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Guys and gals. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry. I, I know. It does suck we put so much work, but... So, okay. The story is, this channel started out with you actually watching a channel where they did something similar to what I, we did. I did. I saw a channel where um, it was a couple, and he basically read her, like, the last two books because she'd never read them before, and I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cool. And, and she listened to them, and her response was, I can read better than that. <laughs> And she had been getting me to read, trying to get me to read Harry Potter for years. So she was like, what if we do this? Will you let me read them to you? I was like, okay, sure, whatever. So we started out doing it for fun. And we realized that, you know, we could never monetize them. They're not our creative property. But at the time, it just started out, we really didn't care. We were just doing it for fun. They yes. get taken down. Whatever. Oh, wow, Ren. Thank you very, very much. Wow, well. Ren. Thank you so much. Yes, my yes. dead inside. That was the channel. Um, that is so funny that you know them. I watched the same channel before I found you guys. Dead inside. Yep. I'm... I'm... Hello, everyone. Yeah, I actually listened to Dead Inside, but they only had the last two books. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. So she listened to it. She said, I can read this better. So we started it. We really didn't care if they got taken down or whatever. And honestly, we thought, well, no one's going to watch them, so who cares? <laughs> then we got to, like, Goblet of Fire, and people were watching them. And we had, like, a thousand views on some videos. And at that point, I thought... Well, okay, maybe our stuff is, you know, it's like we're getting away without getting caught. Maybe somehow ours falls in under fair use or something. Yeah, we thought maybe we were in that... Um... Kind of like uh, reaction videos. Yeah. You can't monetize them, but you can still put them up. And YouTube doesn't strike them, them down or strike them. We thought we were kind of in that category because, yeah, we were reading the content, but then we were discussing it and analyzing it. So we thought we kind of had hit that sweet spot. And then we hit a thousand subscribers. Huge moment. Thank you all for who were who were there when it happened. Um, yeah, thousand and, subscribers was really something. And the thing with getting your channel partnered is that someone from YouTube physically clicks on your channel, and reviews a couple of your videos. They usually look at your recent uploads and, like, your most popular and basically say, okay, this fits our standards and it's fine yeah. to monetize this channel. So, so after we that good. happened, I thought, okay, maybe this does, as long as we don't monetize any of these videos, which we never did. We never, never made a cent off of the 
Harry Potter videos or the Game of Thrones videos. It was just kind of like reaction videos, you know? Um, but then the other day, we got a strike, which I thought, okay, whatever. I mean, it, it was bound to happen. But then I checked a couple other channels that had like audiobooks up and Harry Potter discussions, kind of like we do. Yeah. And they were just like gone. <laughs> Like, a lot of their videos were gone, or the channel was just gone. Yeah. So I kind of freaked out and put everything on private. Um. So, Susan, I don't think that it's Rolling that is doing this. I think it is Warner Brothers that would be going after us. I Warner Brothers owns the intellectual properties to Harry Potter. Or so. whoever publishes the official audiobook. Right, or who publishes the audiobooks. But... I don't think it's rolling. Yeah. I, I just want to put that out there. I don't think it's rolling that's coming after everybody. And Mike is saying that they've changed their terms. YouTube has changed their terms. Yeah. That, I mean, maybe that's why. But my my theory is that... When it comes to like reaction videos and stuff, YouTube turns a blind eye as long as you don't monetize it. Yep. And usually the content creator will turn a blind eye because it usually encourages people to look more into that content. You know, and, you, and pay some for people it. came here and they've never read Harry Potter before and then they get super into it. You know, then they go out and buy the books or they buy their wand, that sort of thing. Yeah. My theory is that I think with like the recession happening, and all this, I think they're kind of cracking down to make sure their revenue streams are as strong as possible. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot of the Harry Potter audiobooks and content like that being taken down. Yep. Uh, it's probably definitely recession driven. Um, so for now, the Harry Potter book content. Um, I mean, we still have it all, but we do not have another platform to provide it to you as of right now. Um, because I also do not believe that we would be able to upload them to Patreon without infringing on Patreon's guidelines as well. So, for the time being, um... We we cannot provide those at this moment in time, but um, that doesn't mean never. That just means not right now unless we can figure out something else. Um, thank you very much, Rob. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. I know of a channel that had to get rid of their 1984 readings, so it's not about copyright. Hmm. I don't know if Twitch would allow it. Well, the only thing is Twitch, we could probably read them on Twitch, just live streaming. Right. Because, uh, as long as there's no music or video, I mean, we could probably get away with it. But Twitch doesn't host videos for longer than like two weeks. Or I think after you get partnered, it hosts it for up to a month. But either way. They don't, they don't, it's like Snapchat. It goes away after a while. Yeah. They don't uh, host videos permanently, but we're kind of looking at this as we're trying to look at it in a good way. Like, we usually put a lot of time into the audiobooks and the readings and stuff. Yep. Now, it's kind of, this has kind of pushed us out of our comfort zone, so to say. And uh, I think we're going to start kind of diversifying and trying some of the projects that we've been wanting to do. Number one, as far as the Harry Potter audiobooks go, I don't know if they'll be back on the channel. We're going to try to figure out a way to distribute those, but I think uh, the key thing we're going to try to do is we're going to pursue actually getting an official audiobook made, either put up on like Audible or some other way, but uh, we're going to be looking into that, trying to you know, 
provide yep. provide my reading on an official platform. Yeah. So we're going to look into ways to do that. I know Audible is just kind of like a submit and see type thing, but uh, we'll, we're going to try to reach out some other audiobook providers and see what they think. I mean, we have all of the audio right here that we can show them. Like, here you go. What do you think? Aripra, am I, can I can't see. Aripra says Google Classroom in the name of educational and transformative content and then share the link on Patreon. <laughs> That's a little sneaky, I, but that I might mean, work. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> um, we did have some other projects that we wanted to kind of work on. So one of the things is... I know we've talked about a lot is the ring theory videos. Yes. The ring, the Which, Harry Potter ring composition books, um, yeah. videos that we were working on. And just with all the reading we were doing, the project kind of just got put by the wayside. So now that we've kind of been put into this pickle, we can kind of pick that up again. And we can start producing those. We have all of the scripts done for the first book. And I am in the middle of taking all of the notes for the second book. So we can start putting those out there for you guys. And email you. Honestly, that was one of my ideas. And I haven't figured out how I want to do it. Maybe Dropbox or something. But oh, I was thinking about just uploading them to like a Dropbox. And then sending out the link to whoever might want to download it. Ren, I, I did think about LibriVox as well. LibriVox. Um, they do, they let you, they do audio recordings of everything and anything in the public domain. Yeah. And yes, public domain books. Uh, we were act she was actually just looking at those. So before, before I get onto the public domain thing, I will say that, um, we will keep reading all the young dudes. That is not copyrighted material. So we will be streaming more all the young dudes tomorrow. Um, and any fan fiction type stuff, we can continue to stream and read that. So all the young dudes isn't going away. Just to... Wait, well, put that it should there. fall under the transformative content umbrella, but... <laughs> You know, it's it's a gray area. So hopefully that stays up. We're going to continue to finish all the young dudes. We want to finish that. Um, we're too close. We've come too far. We've gone through some bad chapters. We've we invested so much and I have gotten so angry to stop now. And uh, she was just looking at a lot of the books in the public domain and things like that that we, we want to read for the channel. And... Uh, Oh, Brandon, that's that's very nice. He said he'd buy them from us. Oh, well, thank you. I was working um, on the older streams for all the young dudes to try and catch up. So I was just kind of looking through just to see what our options were for public domain novels. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, we wanted to throw it out to you guys. First off, if there was any public domain books you want to see and then we'll uh put up a poll and see which one we should do first yeah i mean you guys you we create for you so if there are any books in the public domain that uh oh my god they said they would buy them too the, the oh my god thank you guys um mike wise dracula immediately dracula. <laughs> um I was saying The Great Gatsby because I'm always down to just roast Daisy. Not Moby Sick. <sighs> um, uh, Jane Eyre. Little Women. The Art of War. Dracula. I mean, I wouldn't oh. say no to Dracula. The Picture of Dorian Gray. Yes, we're reading Moby Dick one day, Ren. It's happening. We won't go there first, but we are going to read that yeah, one ben of these days. Benjamin, I'm going to go back and put those up. It was kind of a scramble when, like I said, I had a little panic attack. I wanted to make sure the channel wasn't in danger of going down. So 
uh, those videos will be brought back. Oh my god, everyone's saying they would buy them. You guys. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Well, like we said, I mean, as far as Harry Potter goes, figure out a way to distribute them to you. But uh, most importantly, we're going to be working as hard as we can to try to get an official audiobook out there. Well, her. With her voice. Right. That's right. Move over, Stephen Fry. Have a biscuit, Warner Brothers. <laughs> well, it'd be Warner Brothers producing it. Yeah. No, Warner they Brothers gotta hire employee. Me. They gotta hire me. They don't know what they just shot down. I guess. <laughs> uh, Frankenstein, Pride and Prejudice. I'd say Huck Finn, but I don't think we could get away with Huck Finn. It. it I was gonna say we're allowed to read it, but I'm pretty sure. YouTube's uh, algorithm would take that down just from just language alone. Language, crime and punishment, war and peace, Count of Monte Cristo, Christmas Carol, The Odyssey. There's just so Don Quixote. There's so much, The Wizard of Oz, um, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Wuthering Heights. Oh, Pride and Prejudice. Pride, oh, is somebody, yep. uh... Alicia, who says it. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, yeah. When I started listening to audiobooks, Moby Dick was my first one. Great book. <laughs> Moby Dick is so good. Tale of Two Cities, such a good book. Great Expectations. Okay. Feel Great like Expectations, we should, uh... just for the scene with the cake alone, is is good. Just for the Just for the scene with the cake. Um, I feel like we should start with maybe a couple shorter ones to get them out there. Well, I'm not saying let's just dump, dive right into Don Quixote. Let's no, that's a that's a commitment. I'd be I'd be down though. I haven't I've, read Don Quixote. Oh, Don Quixote. Let's fight some awesome. windmills. It's awesome. That's all I know about it is he fights windmills. <laughs> he wears a um, he wears a um. A, a, like a wash basin on his head for a helmet. Mm -hmm. Oh, talk, talk. I love the Odyssey. Uh -oh. Odyssey was so good. I don't think To Kill a Mockingbird is in the public domain. It isn't? Is it? It's got to be soon if it isn't. I don't know if it is. I'm still going through this list. Three Musketeers, which we should totally read. So funny. Wind in the Willows, never read it. Peter Pan. Sherlock Holmes, everything. Everything Sherlock Holmes. Alice in Wonderland. Um, oh, the original John Carter. That is a great book. Um, I mean, come on, it was what inspired Star Wars. Yeah? Yeah, Bucket on its head and he fights the windmills, yep. Uh, Walden, so Thoreau is, is on here. Um... Uh, Marceline, we're, uh, we're just discussing right now, uh, kind of the future of the channel and talking about what we're going to do with it since, uh, the Harry Potter content was taken down. So no, we haven't read any Young Dudes yet. Maybe we will, we'll read a chapter. We could read a chapter maybe before we peace yeah. out tonight. Cause we're, we're doing another stream tomorrow where it's just going to be straight all the Young Dudes without all this discussion. Oh, do we want to read the Wealth of Nations? Um, the Divine Comedy. Yeah, Mer, I think you're right. That's why I'm I'm thinking of ways to do it. I'm still looking in. Uh, I'm just thinking Dropbox is probably the best way or some file distribution site and just anyone who wants it can go in and dig it. Or, you know, if I happen to uh, <coughs> torrent it. Or someone torrents it, you know. Who am I to say who downloads it? That's fair. Oops. <laughs> I left uh, my files uploading. <laughs> Happens sometimes. These are in the public domain. Oh, they are? The Jungle Book is in the public domain. Oh, there we go. So we could definitely read the Jungle Book. Mike is like, no! 
No wealth of nations. No. <laughs> oh, Heart of Darkness. Call of the Wild. Grimm's Fairy Tales. Man, there's all sorts of stuff we can read. Ooh, how about the origin of the species and means of natural selection? It's thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, I would like it. <laughs> Paradise Lost is really good. Mm -hmm. very, very controversial. So yeah, um... There's... We're going to be changing up a little bit. Harry Potter, obviously, we won't be doing the audiobooks. But uh, we do. this doesn't mean we can do more Harry Potter-based content. Yeah, that won't go away. Because we have some uh, free time now. I can focus more on the heavier editing side of things. Want to read Othello? <laughs> I mean, I think it's the best Shakespeare. Othello. It's one of my favorites. Um, Winnie the Pooh, yes, it just went in the public domain. I kind of want to see the horror movie version. Just I, I think what we can do is we'll put up a poll. You guys can give us some public domain suggestions. And in the meantime, we're going to... Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll put up and, um, you know, I'll put in the poll, like, some of the big ones, like, uh, you know, Pride and Prejudice, you guys said, the Iliad... The Odyssey, whatever. Dracula. But, but if there's any like smaller name books that are in the public domain, is Lord that of the Rings in the public domain? On... Wait, is it? I mean, if it is, that's what we're doing. Sorry, no poll, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I don't know. I think uh, I think they extended that. I think it's in the public domain in the UK, but in the US, I think they extended it. Because of the movies and stuff, or something like that. Because um, that's the only issue, is the UK, Europe and the US have different legislation when it comes to public domain, because I looked into it. The US allows, like, a 30-year extension. Well, because um, the uh, Disney's been doing it with Mickey Mouse for forever. Extending it and extending yeah. it and extending it. Um... So, you know what this means. We just got to yeah. get our passports and move to the UK. Yeah, so Lord of the Rings is not in the public domain in the United States because of the movies and all that stuff. They restored the copyright. For the when does it go in stuff. the public domain? Just out of curiosity. Um, the Hobbit will go in 2032. All right, stay tuned. Twenty thirty two, Julia Babuli, and um, it's going to be like twenty fifty for the actual Lord of the Rings. But is it in the public domain in the UK? I mean, I'll get a VPN right now. Uh, We're moving, guys. London, here we come. Divergent? I thought Divergent was a pretty there's, new novel. No, there's no way Divergent's in the public domain. The Island of Dr. Moreau is definitely in the public domain. Uh, Catcher in the Rye is not in the public domain because the author is a dick. <laughs> I read about this. <laughs> Apparently he is like a total asshole when it comes to uh, copyright. Like he does not allow his content of that book to be used for anything. And he keeps uh, fighting to keep it, like, renewed. So, Lord of the Rings was in the public domain, but the U.S. Supreme Court ruled to uphold a federal law which returned some foreign works to copyright. This includes the music of several Russian composers, Picasso's paintings, some Hitchcock films, and Tolkien. Because okay. the U.S. Supreme Court sucks. All right, so we're moving. That's it. We're J.D. Moving. Salinger is a homophobe. And I mean, he's a homophobe. That's great. If that's true, then that just one more thing on the list that makes him an asshole, I guess. Exactly. Um, Ooh, the Godfather really would be a good one. 
Yes. New adventures. Exactly. Um, we got lemons. We're making lemonade. That was the point. Because, uh, you know, we were kind of... We were sad when it happened. We were. And we started thinking, well, this frees up some time. We can start working on the projects that we've been meaning to do. But I mean, we, we could, wanted to stay consistent with the audio. We could also do Tea Time with Hagrid. Yes, that we is. We toyed around with Tea Time with Hagrid. We could actually open that up to do it. Yeah, they can't take us down for uh, paraphrasing the books in our own way. So there's that. I believe the theme was we, at least I, get a little inebriated and then we talk about Harry Potter. Exactly. That was so the idea. We yep, have, The Great yeah. Gatsby is an option. Yes, The Great Gatsby. I said that because I... Mm, book makes me so mad. The, <laughs> and you want like, to read it. I am totally open to just trashing Daisy. You just want to rant public. about her. Yes. I don't want to read that book. I don't know if there's a character I hate more. Than Daisy? Yeah. Well, maybe I do, but I don't think anyone's made me angrier while I was reading. Umbridge didn't make you angry? No. Okay. She didn't make me as angry. Will you wear a giant suit, a beard, and do a West Country accent for tea time with Hagrid? Mr. Tuck Tuck, thank you so much. Yes, very much. Thank you. Aww. Thank you very, very much. That's kind of how we're seeing it. That's, yeah, that's how we're seeing it. This is the move that kind of pushed us out of the nest, you know? And now we gotta spread our wings and fly or hit the concrete. One or the other. We must aim at the ground and miss. Exactly. After all... Key to flying. After all, copyright strikes are just the pathway to the next great adventure. That's right. Not even Caps Lock, Harry. Ah, uh, now I'm thinking about Caps Lock Dingo. Oh, yeah. My angry boy. little Rue. Angry little mans. My angry little red boy. I'm going to have oh, to man. start combing the yard for Horcruxes. I guess so. They might be out there. Um. So... Lex, you gotta wear a giant suit, a beard... Do a West Country accent for Tea Time with Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't you dress up as Hagrid and I'll dress up as someone else? Hagrid and Umbridge. Yeah, why not? Great we could, combination. We could do Hagrid and Umbridge. <laughs> Get our cosplay on. I mean, it could work. That would actually be really fun. I'd love to play as Hagrid, Hagrid. and just annoy you the whole time. Ah, oh, this half breed. I'm locked in here. You're, um, um, you're shedding on me. I don't appreciate it. Please maintain social distance. <laughs> I'll bring the rock cakes. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, um, so so yeah, I think that's that, that's what we want to do. Yeah. We'll read some public domain books, and we'll just branch off into some new stuff. I think you guys are really enjoy Harry Potter. I think you guys are really going to like all the ring composition stuff that we're going to bring to the table. It's yeah. really interesting. It's really cool. Um, and another thing that we're planning on doing is... Um, what's today? Today is the first, so... House of the Dragon premieres on the 21st, so we will be doing reactions to those episodes as they air. So if you want to join us for those, you can join us for those. Basically, we're going to, when it premieres, we're going to watch the episode, then we're going to have a live stream afterwards and we'll talk about it. Yep. And so we encourage you guys to join us for that. I know not everyone is... A Song of Ice and Fire fan. Not everyone's into Game of Thrones, but that is we one. We do have a lot of song, a Song of Ice and Fire fans on the channel now. So. We do, um, you know, and that's something else that that's why we didn't. I haven't recorded any more The Clash of Kings because there's not a point right now in doing that. Um, 
Love in the Time of Cholera? Probably not. But it's such a good book. Right? It's it's iffy because we gotta double check because again, Europe public domain. Things go in the public domain sooner. Yeah. Oh, is it? No, oh, that's not the same book. There's a book called Laughter in the Time of Cholera. Oh. And it's a totally... Is it a fanfic or is it... No, it's a diff It's a book by... Um... <coughs> it's a French book. I, I don't... All right. Uh, Love in the Time of Cholera was published in 1985, so hard oh, no. no. <laughs> hard no. Yeah, no. That's a bummer. Why does everything have to be published so recently? I don't know. I mean, at least Wuthering Heights. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's some good ones. There's definitely some good ones. The Ranger's Apprentice series? Do you know? I don't even know what that is. You wanna check yeah. out the domain? Check to see if it's in the main. Um Yeah. It, to Kill a Mockingbird is not in the public domain because its copyright keeps getting renewed over and over and over. Oh. That's fair. That's a big book. I I get it. But man, if you're gonna keep renewing it, do something with it. Make like a, a show or a movie. Another movie. Because I know there was a movie made. For what? To Kill a Mockingbird. It, there was a movie made and it is one of the greatest movies of all time. Settle down. It's unbelievable. It's it's all right. It's all right. It's Who better. are you? <sighs> uh, yeah. This Ranger's Apprentice, two thousand four, published in two thousand four. Ooh. We won't even live to see that be in the public domain, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, A Thousand Splendid Sons. Yeah, there's no way that's in the public domain. There's no way. But I absolutely loved A Thousand Splendid Sons. I loved that book. I cried. Oh, that book was so good. The Kite Runner was so good, too. Oh, I love that book. That was another thing we were going to start doing. Uh, want to figure out like how we want to do it? Oh, oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna start doing uh more of our book reviews, both of like illustrated versions and special editions, but also just talking about like a certain book we read and we really like that sort of thing. So we can still talk about all these books and stuff like that. Um, we also had an idea. We don't know if you guys are interested, but we thought we could maybe also... We did it for a little while with Noelle, um, and it, that didn't really kind of work out, but we thought maybe we could do, at some point, the book club thing. Mm -hmm. Where we, we pick a book once a week, we all get together, we stream, and we talk about what we read. We'll figure out how to do that. Maybe doing it on Discord so more people can jump in and we can all talk, or... Yeah, maybe maybe do a Discord thing where we, we go, oh, we read the first five chapters and, and then we can all get together and talk about it. You know, we everybody can vote on a book that we're going to read and then we'll we'll do book club. Um, so, you know, the options are literally endless. So if you guys have suggestions on what you want to read. From Ecuador, working in Canada in a Lebanese bakery. Found your channel a year ago. Your reading of Harry Potter has turned me into a Potterhead. Oh, oh that's, awesome. that's awesome. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. I want to cry.
I'm just gonna have to do uh, the Carlos, voices. Now. We do what we can. Well, like I said, keep those voices fresh because we're gonna be reaching out trying to do official audiobook. <sighs> that sucks. Under current copyright law, so apparently Dune was set to go under the public domain, but according to current co copyright law, because of the movie, they renewed it. It's got another ninety-five years before it goes. Jesus, into the public domain. what? I I think I I I don't. That's all right. We can still talk about Dune. There's a lot to talk about. There, Dune. We could always talk about Dune. We could read Dune for book club. We could do all kinds of stuff yeah. with Dune. Um, I want to join a book club. Oh, everyone kind of likes the book club idea. Jessica, I know all right. we miss we miss the Harry Potter readings too, but we'll have to we'll try to figure out something with that, and we'll definitely um, try to find a platform for them. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, unless, you know, everyone wants to petition Warner Brothers to let me record an official recording <laughs> or whoever publishes the audiobooks, you know, yeah, I, like I'm I said, we'll saying, be reaching out like anyone know, else wants if, to. If, if, if they want a new recording, I'm just saying both of the audiobooks that are available are written, are read by men. Oh, there you go. We Play can, the demographic card. How about we have a lady read Harry Potter? Maybe I need to tweet rolling. Girl. Girl, listen up. <laughs> listen to this and tell me. Let me read your books for you. <laughs> it's been a long time since you've had a new audiobook reading. Let's just freshen it up. <clears throat> you are very welcome. I'm glad we could bring magic back into your life. Yeah, that's awesome. I blame I mean, Timothy I... Chalamet for that. <laughs> Mike personally blames him specifically. Damn Timothy him. Chalamet, it's his fault. Damn you, Timmy. Ah, <laughs> oh, he was such a good Paul, though, wasn't he? he I was. thought he was a good Paul. The movie was great. The casting was great. I am so excited for part two. <laughs> um... You know, another idea we had is we could just axe the audiobook out and publish the discussions. Yeah. So that the discussion, the, 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 the discussions are still up there. We're kind of brainstorming right now. Yeah. You can tell. We have some very core, solid ideas of what we're going to do. Like, we're going to put out the book reviews. We're going to put out the ring theory videos. Those are solid things that you guys can definitely look forward to. And we're going um, to be doing more audiobooks of public domain books. And which book is still on the table? But. Yeah, you guys throw out some I know I haven't answered any comments in a long time. But I work every day pretty much. It's been hard. I'm sorry. I work like 6 days a week. So You're good. please forgive me for not answering all your comments. Um, but you can always email public domain suggestions. You can put public domain suggestions in the comments. We'll put out a poll. You know, you guys mm. let us know what you really want to tell you on this video. I mean, leave a comment of a public domain book or a book you would like to do for book club. Yep. And we'll we... see which one gets the most, uh, likes on it or most suggestions and yeah. we'll start from there. We could always do Dune for book club, To Kill a Mockingbird for book club, you know, anything. Um, all kind of, the possibilities are limitless. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we were going to read Percy Jackson for the channel. We could do Percy Jackson for the book club. I know, we actually bought all We books have the stuff. books. We could do that, you know, the, we just got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I want your reading of the books. I know, I, uh, I want them too. If, if there was a way to officially do it we would do it um we just don't know how we would do it <laughs> i don't that's... know who to get in contact with about hey can you publish my stuff <laughs> that's that's why we're just gonna reach out see what uh what sticks yep i mean i read uh i read of mice and men we have all the audio for of mice and men we could contact audible and see if they want it mm-hmm and and start there. Um, 
plenty of options. Plenty of options. Exactly. So what do you think? I know this wasn't going to be a long stream, but you want to maybe get in a chapter of all the young dudes? Yeah, we can read in a chap read a chapter of all the young dudes. I know dudes. some people uh, came wanting that, so we can get one in. Let's see. I gotta find. I gotta find where we were. Proceed. Yes, I agree to the terms. Ah, uh, thank you so much. I will listen to anything you guys read, discuss. Aww. And that's why we're going to continue reading and discussing. Oh god, I think this is the chapter. Ugh. Remus goes to the ministry. Because I'm pretty sure the last chapter... Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the, the end of the year yep. and stuff. How many chapters do we have left, Mike? We have 32. 32. Uh, I don't know, Maddie. I mean, we could definitely distribute them. I don't know if we could... Physically make money off of yeah. them. But we could probably distribute them. Mm -hmm. um, Wings of Fire. Daughter of the Samurai. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, tons. Tons of suggestions. Okay. Wings of... I've never heard of Wings of Fire. Me either. But, I mean, if you are gunning for Wings of Fire, then suggest it. Vote for it. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's in the public domain. I've never heard of it. I, I really haven't either. I don't know what it is. Um... See a molten dragon. All right, are we ready? Let's get some on all the young dudes in. I feel like this yeah. is going to probably be a terrible chapter, but I'm going to look on the bright side. I also want to say welcome to all the new faces we've seen here. Uh, yeah, we've a lot of people here tonight. This is very nice. It's I think, nice to see everybody. I think that was the worst part. Like the day everything went down, we like our subscribers jumped up so much. Yeah. But either way. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of people who just... Like, just uh, joined, joined and, our and channel. everything is gone now. Yeah. Everything's on fire. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Everything's fine. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Chapter 156. The War. Aura Headquarters. Content warning for sexual content towards the end of the chapter. Great. It's been in every chapter. I'm just gonna go grab some more. We're gonna hear more about Sirius's dainty pale wrists. Okay, anyway. Ugh, ugh it's so cringy. Monday, 8th of January, 1979. Please let me come with you was the last thing Sirius said as Remus left the flat early Monday morning. I'll be fine. Remus shook his head, trying to give Sirius a reassuring smile. He didn't say what he was thinking, which was, how would that look? It was bad enough he'd been summoned to Moody's actual office at the Ministry. What would he think if Remus brought his boyfriend along for moral support? Who is Remus all of a sudden wanting to hide everything? What is happening? Remus always hid everything. Yeah, but he, w he wanted Sirius to be very open about... Yeah, he wants Sirius to be open. He doesn't want to be open. Yeah, that's some double standard bullshit right there. Okay. Still, Remus had to admit he had a difficult time leaving their cozy little home that morning. He barely left the bedroom since they'd returned from the funeral, let alone get dressed or left the flat. To go to the ministry, he had to wear full robes for the first time since school, which helped a little bit. At least he'd be able to blend in. The visitor's entrance for the Ministry of Magic was about 20 minutes' walk from Soho, and Remus found the early morning stroll more pleasant than he'd expected. It was a crisp, cold January day, and his breath turned white in the winter air. Peter was there to meet him. "'Hiya, Mooney!' Wormtail smiled up at him, giving him an awkward pat on the arm. "'How are you holding up?' "'Oh, you know,' Remus shrugged. Grief was a funny thing. He never knew if he was doing it right.' Looking forward to Saturday. 
Yeah, me too. The full moon was due on the 13th. So far since Hogwarts, the marauders had got away with apparating, Peter sidelonged alonged to the most remote places possible and transforming there. So far, they'd been to the Brecon Beacons, the Outer Herbrides, Dartmoor, and the Forest of Dean. No one in the Order had brought it up yet, though Remus supposed they all assumed he was registered. Peter and Remus entered the Ministry via a telephone box. Peter needed to be there because after Remus had stated his business, a small silver vigi <coughs> visitor's badge dropped out of the telephone's change slot. Wormtail picked it up quickly and muttered the incantation to turn it to tin before giving it to Remus. They descended into the Ministry atrium, which was humming with activity. It was an enormous hall, bigger than Gringotts, with rows of fireplaces lining the walls. Green lights flashed intermittently from each hearth as wizards and witches arrived for work. Peter led Remus through the security stand, where his wand was weighed by a mean-spirited wizard with a long beard. Remus was incredibly grateful to have a friend with him, and secretly quite glad it was quiet, genial Peter rather than Sirius, who had a tendency to get a bit overprotective of Remus when it came to the wizarding community. Next they moved through another hall with a set of lifts and entered the nearest one. "'You're on level two, Peter explained chirpily. "'I'm with the Flu Network Authority on four. Do you need me to show you where the Aura's office is?' Remus thought he would quite like Peter's help, if only Peter wasn't so clearly enjoying having the upper hand. No, he smiled. I'll manage. Cheers, mate. Peter gave him a kind smile as he left the lift. Remus nodded back, and the floor slid closed. The door slid closed. Soon enough, the tannoy announced, Level 2, Department of Magical Law Enforcement, including the Improper Use of Magic Office, Aura Headquarters, and Wizinger Mott Administration of Services. Remus shuffled his way out of the lift and onto the corridor. The lift doors closed behind him with a ping, and Remus stood there for a few moments blindsided. It was a very busy hallway, witches and wizards striding up and down, some in deep conversation, others hastily scribbling down on scraps of parchment, and some of them muttering to themselves. Over his head, purple paper airplanes zoomed back and forth, fluttering into the office doors lined, which lined the corridor. Not canon. We know. <laughs> not canon. Yeah. They did not institute this at this point in time. This is not right. He wished he hadn't been so proud now and asked Pete to walk him right to the right office. There had to be a sound, sign somewhere. Lupin! A loud, familiar voice boomed. Remus turned round with some relief and smiled, seeing Ferox barreling toward him, hand raised in salutation. Hi, he said. Lost? Come with me. Remus followed Ferox along the hallway, past office after office, until they reached an elaborate door with a carved wood frame. Aura headquarters. Nervous? Ferox glanced at him sideways. Remus looked back. Is it that obvious? Ferox laughed and clapped him on the shoulder. I'd be concerned if you weren't. Come on now, it's only moody. And he pushed the door open with one big hand, the other still on Remus's shoulder, as if to stop him running away. As a child, Remus had had some experience with muggle law enforcement, only ever for silly things like running away from the home or being caught causing a disturbance, which usually meant he was just somewhere public and other people would prefer him not to be. The police were extra rough with you once they clocked you were a St. Edmund's boy. They called you things and shove you in their car, or else give off thinly veiled threats of physical violence if you didn't do as you were told. As a result, Remus had never felt that comfortable around authority figures, even if he was a posh boy nowadays. He wasn't exactly sure how similar the auras were to muggle police. He'd only met Moody, Frank and Alice so far. Moody was completely terrifying, but Remus had known him long enough now that he was used to him. Alice and Frank were very nice, very earnest people, but then they didn't know what he really was. The inside of the office was very busy, with rows of desks divided up into cubicles. There were posters of criminals, magically enchanted maps and printed lists on notice boards all round the walls, and memos whizzing back and forth. But the most striking thing about it for Remus was the incredible concentrated scent of strong magic, and dark magic too. Farox's hand, still on Remus's shoulder, steered him toward a desk near the back corner, which had the best vantage point over the rest of the chaotic office. 
Moody's desk and shelves were cluttered with weird and wonderful magical devices, whirring telescopes, glowing crystals, strange humming orbs. Moody himself was bent over a map. Forgetting his nerves, Remus peered over his shoulder to look. He never got over his interest in cartography, and Moody barked, Never sneak up on an aura, Lupin! Remus jumped back, alarmed, and Moody turned to face him, grinning. His mad eye swivelled sickly in its socket. Leo! Moody reached out and shook hands with Ferox, then Remus. Glad to see you're nice and punctual. Have a seat. He gestured at a long, velvet-covered seat against the wall of his cubicle, which hadn't been there a moment ago. Remus and Ferox sat down as Moody cast a spell which muted the noise around them, creating a bubble of peace around his desk that was not dissimilar to James and Sirius's silencing charms. Remus was relieved by the quiet, but Moody's spell had done nothing to mitigate the overwhelming scent of power which filled his nostrils, swam down his throat, and filled up his chest with glorious, rich, syrupy magic. He tried to relax, to let it find its place in him rather than fighting it, but he was ever so slightly drunk with it all at the same time. "'Once again, Lupin,' Moody said gruffly, sitting down in his office chair, which looked like a plush green leather armchair, but swivelled on one stem. "'I'm sorry to hear about your loss. I didn't know hope myself, but that's okay,' Remus said quickly. "'I barely knew her either.' He was keen to keep his mother out of any conversation he had today. He hadn't the strength for two things at once, and if Moody had a mission for him, well then that had to be his main concern. Moody, who was either an excellent legilimens or simply astute and empathetic, nodded manfully and continued. Straight to business then, he said. Good chap. He swiveled slightly in his chair to pick up the map he'd been looking at and handed it to Remus. Remus took it eagerly and looked. It was a map of Britain and Ireland, but not like the ones he'd seen before. There were no roads, marked, no t nor towns nor cities, only the woodland areas, rendered in mossy green splotches of ink. Some of these splotches seemed to shimmer and twinkle, as if there were stars hiding beneath the tree branches. "'Got that from the Control of Magical Creatures' office,' Moody explained. "'Thanks to Ferox here. Know what it is, lad?' "'It's...' Remus poured over it. It's all of the forests with magic in it, or magical creatures. Exactly, Moody nodded, looking very pleased with him. We've noticed that most of the werewolf sightings over the past few years have been in enchanted woodland, forests with a denser population of magical creatures. Now that could just mean they're keeping their ears to the ground for you-know-who, or there are other creatures working with him. Working with them or because the scent of all that natural magic is just too good to resist, Remus thought, his own blood fizzing like champagne just from the twenty or so powerful wizards nearby. He didn't say this, of course, for his own sake. And for the last couple of full moons, there's been a lot of activity here. Moody pointed a stubby, scarred finger at a point on the map somewhere in the Midlands. Why are you telling me now? Remus asked. If you've been following them for months... It's time, Moody said, fixing him with a hard stare, one blue eye, one brown. Greyback's in the country for the first time since the 60s. It's been confirmed. Oh, Remus pursed his lips to quell the rage inside him, rearing up like a cobra, showing its teeth. Where is he? Take me to him right now. Right. Last time you made contact, you came back with some good information, Moody continued. Those who want to join Greyback need to transform with the pack three times, that's right. Hmm, Remus nodded. He wanted to stand up and pace or do something physical, but he couldn't afford for either Ferox or Moody to know that there was anything wrong. And the next full moon is on Saturday? Remus nodded. He looked at Ferox, then Moody again. You want me to go already? To start... To... Just for the moons, Ferox said, his voice calming. Just until they trust you. But once they trust me, Remus said, looking at his hands, then I... I need to meet him, right? Let's see how things go, Moody said, choosing his words carefully. We've three months to plan for that. Okay. 
Remus didn't know what else to say. His head was full and his nerves were raw, and he felt almost ready to explode. But for some weird reason, he just sat there like a polite schoolboy, listening to Moody lay out the plan. He was given a lot of rules. He would have to go alone. He could take his wand, but nothing else. He could tell nobody, not even members of, other members of the Order, not even his best friends. Ferox began suggesting things Remus could say or do to get the pack to trust him, but Remus ignored them. Ignored him. He knew what to do. I'll walk you out, shall I, Lupin? Ferox said finally, with a note of paternal kindness. Thank you, Remus said, standing up quickly. You're a man of few words, Lupin, Moody said, standing up too, holding out his hand once more for Remus to shake. But I have every faith in you. I'll send you the coordinates before Saturday. Make sure you're at home to receive them. Remus nodded blankly, shaking the proffered hand. Just as he'd guided him in, Ferox led Remus back out of the Aura headquarters. All right there, fella, Re Ferox asked once they were clear of the doors. The corridor was a bit quieter than it had been at nine o'clock. Yes, uh, fine. Is there anything you think you need, or if you want me to ask Moody something that'll help, you can just... How will it help? Remus asked suddenly, stopping in the middle of the hallway. He twitched his thumb and cast Muffliato without any effort at all. Ferox blinked, surprised. How will that help? How will what help? Me, meeting Greyback. I've met three members of his pack now, and it's only made things worse each time. That's not true. You've given us some extremely valuable information. If I have, Remus said, then I want to know what you're using it for. To win the war, Remus. Ferox shook his head. When I met Castor last year, Remus said, his voice very low, but met more out of anger than a desire to be discreet. He told me in no uncertain terms that they were planning an attack. I told Dumbledore, and what happened? Nothing. The attack went ahead. So I'll ask again. If I'm gathering information for the Order, if I'm risking my life to do it, then I want to know what for. It's obviously not to save lives. Remus, that was an extremely complicated situation. Explain it. We couldn't act. We couldn't let the werewolves know you were telling Dumbledore anything. We had to preserve your connection with them. What? Remus stared at him. People died. People had their whole lives ruined because of me. You can't think about it that way. How would you think about it? I trusted him. I thought I was doing the right thing. Remus, calm down. Remus realised that he couldn't. He wished he could apparate right then and there, but nothing happened when he tried, so he marched toward the lift instead. Don't follow me, he growled at Ferox, who held the doors open, stopping him from leaving. You need to get your head right, kid, Ferox said very seriously. This is war. It's not noble and it's not always about saving individual lives. You need to get used to that for, you need to get used to that in time for Saturday. Don't worry, Remus turned his head, glaring at the panel of buttons. The doors began to slide shut, grinding loudly as Remus tested his magical strength against Ferox's physical muscle. I'll be ready. The doors shut, Ferox snatching his fingers clear at the very last second, and Remus began to move up, back toward the real world. Remus had barely stepped out of the visitor entrance phone box and he was standing before his own front door. He stored all that leftover magic like a battery and he only needed to have, have the slightest want and the magic did the rest. He remembered the curse Snape had thrown at James, which he deflected on the last day of school. It would be a useful skill, if only he could depend on it. Not only was he full of magic, but his temper had reached boiling point now that he was home. It was a peculiar feeling. Similar to the moments before transforming, right before the mind-numbing pain kicked in. A howling, grasping animal longing. God, he needed to... He needed... Serious? He burst through the door, yelling. No luck. The flat was empty. Remus gave a frustrated growl and kicked the wall, knocking a hole through the plasterboard. Fuck, he muttered. Sirius, come here. He pressed his palm against the top of the wall and forced some magic out. 
the hole at the base of the wall closed at once. Thank goodness. It wasn't enough. He had more. He needed to vent it. A release valve. He pulled off his robes, then his jumper, tossing them onto the couch, pacing the room in his thin t-shirt and trousers. He could go for a run. He could apparate to the Lake District for a few hours and just run around like a madman. He could turn the wall to sponge and start punching it until he'd run out of energy. He could drink himself into oblivion. As long as he did something. Mooney? The front door opened and there was Sirius. You're here! Yeah, weirdest thing. Sirius closed the door behind him. He smelled of petrol and motor oil and leather, and Remus felt himself stiffen instantly. Oh, that would work. I was working on the bike up the road, and then... I don't know, I could have sworn I heard your voice. But if you only just got back, then it couldn't have been... Remus couldn't take it any more. He crossed the room in two strides and pushed Sirius up against the wall, kissing him hard. Sirius kissed him back, eager to please as always. Remus pressed harder, taking Sirius's lovely white wrists, smeared with oil, holding them and pushing a knee between his legs. He began to kiss down Sirius's neck next, nipping at the soft flesh there, and Sirius gasped. Bloody hell, are you all right? Hmm, Remus moaned. Just want to... Sirius moved his hips slightly, pressing into Remus's rigid cock. It felt like electricity, and Remus almost lost control of it altogether, squeezing Sirius's wrists, slamming his eyes shut as he fought to hang on. He wasn't the only one that felt it. Fuck! Sirius. There has a wrist fetish. There is a wrist <laughs> thing going on here. <laughs> like. Uh, fuck! Sirius panted, helpless in Remus's grip. Was that you? You feel. What's. What's. Magic! Remus managed to stammer, eyes still closed, rolling his forehead against Sirius's shoulder dizzily. There was so much. I just. Um. And suddenly it was Sirius who was in control. He'd turned the tables, and now he was pulling Remus to the bedroom, and thank God the flat was small, and thank God there was no need for any more silencing charms or secrecy, because there was simply not the time. Need you, Sirius was saying incoherently, pulling off his shirt and then tugging at Remus's black, greasy fingerprints getting everywhere. Need to feel you everywhere. Yes, Remus retorted, intoxicated. Yes, yes. Whatever he was feeling, he knew Sirius could feel it too, and he pushed the magic outwards, feeling the, filling the room with it, igniting every touch. Remus groaned as their bare skin finally met, and Sirius closed his eyes and shuddered, grasping fingers and gritted teeth. Any sense of shame or concern was obliterated by the heat erupting between them. Remus gave in and thought of nothing else as he selfishly arched and bucked against Sirius, who kept feverishly whimpering, "'Oh, Mooney!' Mooney, oh god, I am not comfortable with this. Over and over, their fierce rhythm increased as they began to tense and contract, grasping as the world exploded. For a few blissful seconds, everything went white. That wasn't enough. They had to go twice more before Sirius was satisfied, and Remus still felt like he could run a marathon. If you're planning to visit the Aura's office again, Sirius breathed hoarsely, I'm going to need some warning. Sir, Remus started, but Sirius clapped a hand over his mouth, grinning. Don't you dare apologize. I mean, fucking hell. Remus laughed, pulling his hand away. He waved a hand at the window lazily, and it slid open, letting the cool winter air in. Wow. Sirius raised his eyebrows. How long does that last? It's going away. Remus said, closing his eyes. It was. He could feel his heart slowing down, his muscles relaxing. Last time Snape's curse drained it, so I suppose any kind of counter-magic works. Well, I'd prefer this to cursing you. Sirius rolled over and stroked Remus's bare hip. Hmm, Remus murmured in agreement, eyes still closed. So, Sirius said, his hand still now, his voice more solemn. It either went really well or really badly at the Ministry. Both. Remus flunked.
Remus flung his arms over his face. Do we have to talk about it? Yeah, I think we do. Remus sighed heavily. He sat up, reaching for his cigarettes. Greyback's back in England, he started. Sirius sat up at once, frowning. He took a cigarette from the box Remus held out, placed it between his lips, lit it, and looked at Remus very seriously. Tell me everything. And Remus did. Wait, Remus actually told him everything? Uh, well, I guess so. Maybe he's growing as a character. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> this chapter really didn't feel like he was growing as a character. But no, not really. Not with him and Ferox and everything. But, uh, yeah. I don't know why. I mean, they've had, like, romantic moments, but that scene kind of made me feel awkward. I just... With Remus and Sirius. Yeah, I... I... Um... Michelle said that... Uh, she would donate for a free gift of the recordings. I have to figure out a way to distribute it. Because, I mean... Uh, that is not a bad idea, though. Yeah. Um, um, they're that obviously... sounds just like... Mo oh, everyone likes my moody voice. Thank you. And uh, someone said it. Yeah, uh, Mike said it. What's impressive to me is that you do the same exact voices for all the characters. I don't know how you keep track of it. Because I can do different voices. Like when I read Demona and stuff, I can do different voices. But I feel like they change every night when I read. Unless it's a consistent character that I'm reading every time. It all just happens inside my head. I couldn't tell you how they are all in there, but they are in there. Well, I mean, I... 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 I don't know how I do it. I don't have an explanation other than they all just kind of live in there and that's what they sound like in my brain. That sounds crazy. Oh, Mike has to go to his wrists anonymous meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you for popping in and uh, letting us know that you like our stuff. Yes, we appreciate it. Uh, I think Ferox is right. Remus needs to grow the fuck up. About the war. Remus is like, I told Dumbledore and he didn't even do anything about it. All those people died. It was all my fault. Like, I know. Uh, uh. I mean, I don't think we're ever going to get rid of whiny Remus because he does kind of keep that. The only person who slapped some sense into him is Harry. Yeah. So up until the, then. The, yeah, the whiny Remus thing never that's does go just away. That's part of his character. Yeah. The self-pitying. I just, now Greyback's back in England and I'm like, oh. I, I don't know. I think Ferox was trying to talk some sense into him and tell him you, this is war, you can't look at it that way people die, you have to make tough decisions you, and he's like, I can't trust Dumbledore like, I just obviously Dumbledore made that decision for a reason, and it was not an easy decision, and Dumbledore probably feels like shit about it you don't know, Remus, you don't know exactly uh, yep, Maddie um, always the martyr, every time Remus the martyr and thank you, Ricky Bobby Scrap. Uh, hopefully it goes well. I also just think, like, I don't know. I find all that cringy where it's, like, serious, always eager to please. Just, like, ew. Right? I don't, wait, I, it's not the fact... Maybe it's because I don't have any attraction to serious that... I just don't think of Sirius in that way. I don't, I mean, you like Sirius Black, so I, 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 I guess you're a better judge. How do you feel about it? It was cringy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in my head, is Sirius would not be submissive in that way. Right, that's the thing. Like, like Sirius to me is dominant take charge kind of dude like i feel like he's always he's act before i think i'm gonna do this i'm gonna charge in guns blazing i feel like he's that way with everything 
I don't yeah. think he would just be like, eh, my dainty wrists, so oh, take me, Remus, take me now. I just How don't... can I fight back with my pale white wrists? Yeah, I just... I don't... I don't know. He's always using Sirius for sex like a sex toy. <laughs> uh... Wow, man. And I, at this point. Yeah, because he's just like, we're serious. I need relief. I need to get this out of my system. It's not about being with Sirius and wanting that with Sirius. It's about, I need something for me right now. And also, the magic has reached, like, Dragon Ball Z Season 3 levels where the power levels no longer matter and, like, it just doesn't matter. The wrists are strong tonight. <laughs> yeah, the magic thing too. It's like the the magic is all of a sudden overwhelming, There's, and he the, needs to discharge it. Like, is it force lightning? Just, yeah, the rules are just gone. It's just. Also, they shouldn't have interdepartmental memos right now, because Arthur Weasley said they used to use owls all the time. Oh, dropping some knowledge. And that they had to switch over because the owls made too much of a mess. So there shouldn't be any interdepartmental memos right now. There should be owls shitting everywhere. Yeah. So. Maybe you should do like a segment where you just tear apart uh, fanfics. <laughs> For breaking call all the it, rules. Uh, get your cannon straight. I could. I could do that. I would have a lot of fun doing that i was gonna say you already do it i would have a lot of fun doing that we could all rip apart some uh some fanfics for not following the canon same thing happened with fantastic beast the mo 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 magic got so strong there was no conflict for a storyline uh see that's the problem when you start dealing with like how strong uh forces you know you have to have balance. some kind of foil for it. Yeah. Like, you gotta have a kryptonite, right? Yep. Superman is like this om omnipotent, like, omnipotent, omniscient, like, invincible, invincible being. being capable of all these things, but a little bit of kryptonite and he's fucked. And it happens all the time. A little bit of kryptonite time. and bam, Batman kills him. Yeah, right. A Batman, Batman always carries but, some on him. Whenever they do anything yeah. together, he's always got it in his utility belt, just in case shit goes down. He's got that there. Batman, always be prepared. He's always prepared. Um, but you gotta have something that, that's a counterbalance, and right now, the counterbalance is, I need to just use Sirius for sex until I feel better. Like, like uh, ah, the whole, you it, know... That's what's cringy about it to me. When it's his, not the sex scenes itself, it's... When his magic, like, went out of control around the moon, I could justify that. Okay, we don't really know how werewolves work. We things. talked about that, yeah. yeah we, t we had a long talk about that, yeah. But now it's just, he gets angry. And he, like, what, he's hulking Hulk, out? Yeah. <laughs> Did he inject some magic serum? All the magic in the room at the Auror's office and the anger, like, fueled the surge of magic in him what right it's is that some weird dragon ball z stuff like yeah. the guy just screams for five minutes all of a sudden he's more powerful yeah the the mechanics are getting a little broken and again he's just angry all the time i'm just like uh okay it's my secret i'm always angry he's a hulk He's turning into the Hulk. He is turning into the Hulk. Oh my god. He's a Hulk. Is Sirius Black Widow? I guess so. Oh god. We know what happened there. Spoilers. Yep, yeah, I was gonna say. Kind of, kind of is actually accurate though. Yeah. Considering how Sirius Black goes. It is kind of accurate. Yeah. It is a very Black Widow kind of death, isn't it? Though, so, damn. Even in canon, it makes sense. <sighs> Voldemort, get get going. Get snapping, bud, because, jeez, this is... 
Gotta end. Who would want to fight? Thanos or Voldemort? Does Thanos have all the invis uh, the invisibility the stones? Invisibility stones. <laughs> uh, does Thanos have the Infinity Stones? Yes, but Voldemort has all the Horcruxes. All of his Horcruxes. Mm -hmm. mm. Voldemort might win. Full powered Voldemort versus full powered Thanos. Because if, if I mean Thanos has a fifty-fifty shot, I guess just snap his fingers, please disappear, please disappear. But Voldemort could then come back. Yeah, that's true. Seven times. <laughs> and that snap might not work every time. Well, no, it fried Is Thanos. The... So if it didn't work, plus he'd have to snap faster than Voldemort can cast a spell. I think that's just, I think it's a probability. Whoever did their thing first wins. There's an idea for a video. Who would win? Oh, but what if Voldemort got into Thanos' head? Use legitimacy on him. That's what I mean. But maybe it's not really reality. Maybe Thanos changed reality. He could still get inside Thanos' head. But, but would, he be would Voldemort a real know? Thanos but head. would Voldemort know? That's what so I mean. There's a lot of. That's a whole video. Yeah, that's... That's a lot to think about. This was going to be a short stream. We don't have time for that. <laughs> no, we can't discuss that. Um. Oh, Maddie said, yep, he said he needed to punch a tree or you serious once again. Funny that those are like the two that's similar. Like, it, I can punch something or you serious. I can Same punch thing. something, I can run around for hours, or I can... Bang Sirius. And that whole thing where Sirius was like, I thought I heard you. Like, ugh. Ugh. She, the author's kind of writing Sirius like a dog. Which Royal I Royal companion. Get, which I get the whole he does manifest um extreme loyalty thing. Yeah. Um, Rowling does say, like, Sirius barked with laughter and all that stuff, but, um, I don't know. It's also kind of like that. They use that in, like, romance novels. Like, I thought I heard you call my name. Like, they do that with, um, Jane Eyre is probably, like, the best example that I can use where that happens. But it works. This feels cheap. Like, oh, we're so close and we're so yeah. in love that I heard you. No, you're not in love, Sirius. You are... You are gaslighted. That's what you are. I'm going to stop you right there because Carlos just nailed it. Remember that Voldemort failed to take over a high school. Thanos erased half the universe. That's true. Voldemort didn't have all the Deathly Hallows. He That's didn't. why I had to give Voldemort the Deathly Hallows. Because without those, it's no contest. Thanos, every time. Plus, Thanos is in love with Lady Death. Voldemort hates death and is scared of it. That's true. Well, there you go. Still, conversation for another time. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. This chapter was a little cringy for me. It was. I... His relationship with Sirius is just, in some ways, like, not getting any better. Well, what chapter was that? 156. Okay. So, we got 34 30. more chapters. 32. 31. Oh, because there's 88. That's yeah. Right. I was thinking 180. Okay. So, next chapter is called... I'm sorry, I'm, I want to be excited. I'm not. The pack. Oh! Wow, wow! Uh, wow, wow! She, she stopped licking so, for a minute. So you're, wow, wow. you're doing her call. Um, 
so yeah i guess on that note we were just doing a short stream to let you guys know what's going on with the channel we're going to be streaming again tomorrow nights yep uh thursday and saturday so check us out then tomorrow we'll probably be about the same time or 6 30 you want to do it 6 30 we can do it at 6 30 6 30 so we, a half hour have, earlier yep we'll stream tomorrow at 6 30 where we will where we will read more all the young dudes um and we will again stream thursday and saturday and we will get cracking on some of our new ideas um and as far as the audiobooks go, uh, just sit tight. And yeah, as far as Harry Potter goes, we're going to figure out a way to get it to you guys, whether it be Dropbox or whatever. Yeah. And um, in the so, meantime, in, thing, in terms of new audiobooks, uh, anything that's in the public domain you want us to read, uh, drop it in the chat or leave a comment. Yep. And, and we can get cracking on, and, you know, if we get an overwhelming... For one thing or another. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know. We'll get cracking on, on some more content. We'll we'll read. Uh, we'll get reading. Yep. Alright guys. So we will see you all tomorrow. Yep. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for thank being you. there for us. And thank you for continuing to uh, be with us during this little upheaval that we've yes. had. Things are changing, but we're going to make it for the better. Yes. All right. Take See care.